Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the IDS Hype training. We will be covering what Hype is, the different products for Hype, how it's wired into the IDS panels, and how it works. So let's get started. Hub is a GPRS uh, outstation that links to the alarm panel. It uses a cell phone network to communicate with the Hype platform, which forwards the alarm events to the Hype base station. The Hype Hub allows your allows you to connect to the to the IDS alarm system with the Hype Home app. This allows the homeowner to control the IDS alarm system and receives alarms notifications using a smartphone. This can then reduce responses to false alarms. The antenna, con uh, the, uh, antenna connector. Connect the antenna here. The antenna here, should you use an external antenna with what they need if you are concerned about signal strength. The LEDs. The three middle LEDs will flash on power up to indicate where, where the, where in in the connection cycle it is. One flash, flashing one time look is looking for a cell phone network. A two times flash, when the LED is flashed two times, it's trying to connect to the high platform. When the LED is flashed three times. It's the, the hype is trying to register on a hype platform. Once the hype is connected correctly, the APN light comes on. The hype dialer. This is the hype dialer board interface. This is, is needed if you are linking a hype hub uh, to an alarm panel, panels dialer used for non IDS panels. The red LED will turn on when the dialer is open. The serial connector. This is the serial connector. This is used to sync, sorry, the serial port uh, connection. This connects to the uh, IDS alarm panel serial port when using the Hype Home app. The Hype Hub must be connected using the serial port the sync button. This is used to sync the Hype Hub with the Hype Home app. The inputs. The, the Hype Hub has three inputs built into the unit. You can set the, hype, the Hub to transmit a message each time these inputs are triggered. You can connect the IDS, you can contact the uh, IDS help desk to program what account code and alarm event uh, is sent when uh, these inputs are triggered or when, tra uh, or when, or with, with training, you can set these, um, these inputs uh, yourself on the Hype Home uh, Hype platform. The dialer uh, connection uh, terminals, the L1 and L2 should be connected to the alarm panel dialer, often called tip and ring. You must have the, you must have a hype dialer interface when connecting the hype hub to an, uh, to the alarm panels dialer. The hype dialer is purchased separately. 
the DC terminals, uh, the 12 volt DC uh, input should be powered by the TX connectors of the alarm panel. There is no polarity, so you can wire the, the positive and negative either way. The connection LEDs show the hype hub connection status. And as a good troubleshooting starting point, uh, you can see the LEDs are flashing once when searching for net for signal, twice searching for the hype servers, and three times when trying to log on. The red wire on the serial cable must be closest to the X-series heatsink. Connect the power to the panel's TX uh, connector. The hype serial is a GPRS outstation that links to the alarm panel, just like the hype hub. It's, it uses the cell phone network to communicate with the hype platform, which forwards alarm events to, to the hype base station. The hype serial does not have a dialer capability, so it only works with the IDS panels using the serial connection. As you can see, it has your, your antenna connection. The, the future use is still in testing. There is a tamper option uh, switch the connection LEDs, which is similar to what the LEDs on the Hype Hub are, and they, they actually run the same way. One flash is searching for signal, uh, two flashes is, is finding the Hype server, platform server, and three for logging onto the network. Connect the antenna here. Um, should, you, should you use an external antenna with a, a lead as if you are concerned about the signal strength, the three left LEDs will flash on power up and indicate where the, the connection cycle is. One, uh, of one flash is looking for cell phone network, um, two is trying to connect to the hype platform, three is trying to register on the hype platform. Once the hype hub has connected correctly, the APN and TX lights will come on the serial connection to the alarm panel, to the alarm panel serial port when using the Hype Home app. The Hype Hub must be connected using a serial port. The sync button is used um, to sync the Hype Hub with the Hype Home app. The tamper switch reports a tamper when the lid is open. The 12 volts DC input should be powered by the TX connector to the alarm panel. And there is a polarity, so be careful. You don't mix up the positive and negative. This connection lead shows the Hype Hub's connection status and is good troubleshooting starting point.
The Hype IP Connect is an Ethernet based art station that links to the alarm panel. It uses the customer's internet connection to, to communicate with the Hype platform. The IP Connect allows you to connect to your IDS pen, uh, system with the Hype Home app. This allows an alarm owner to control the IDS alarm system and receive notifications using a smartphone, also reducing uh, false uh, alarms. Uh, the connection LEDs. The panel comes an LED flashes when the when communicating with the X series panel. Network network comes lead flashes when the when communicating on the network. The server auth LED on is on when the connect when connected to the hype platform. The network server auth LED will flash during power up to indicate where it, uh, in the startup sequence it, uh, it is. Flashing once means a firmware is, is starting up. When it flashes twice, it's initializing the ethernet port. When it flashes three times, it's obtaining an IP address uh, um, from, uh, from uh, the uh, DHCP server. You cannot set a static IP address on the uh, IP modules. Four flashes indicates that it's connecting to the internet, and five flashes is trying to connect to the Hype platform. Six flashes uh, indicates that it's trying to register on the Hype platform. Once the uh, uh, <clears throat> sorry, once the Hype IP Connect has connected correctly to the server or once it's uh, once the IP Connect is, is uh, IP Connect is connected correctly, the server or light will come on. The power LED will come on when, when the hype is connected with sufficient power. A serial port to the IDS panel. Serial port. <clears throat> the 12 volt DC should be powered by the TX on, on the, of the alarm panel, and there is no polarity. Um, sorry, yeah, sorry, there is polarity on the on the IP module. So the, the serial or smaller hype uh, products, be it the serial and the IP module are polarity. So you need to be careful with the connection uh, of it from, um, from the TX as well. The ethernet port, you can, you can connect your, your LAN ethernet cable from your router or switch to, to this port. The Wi-Fi module connector for the uh, allows you to connect to Wi-Fi you, uh, to your Wi-Fi uh, router using a WPS connection. <coughs> On power up, the Wi-Fi uh, module waits for the waits for the LEDs to start flashing in a clockwise sequence. Then press the WPS button uh, on the router. The LED show the hype, uh, IP, connect, IP connection status and is a good troubleshooting point, uh, starting point. The red wire on the <clears throat> serial port must be closest to the X series heatsink. Connect power to the panel's TX connector. Connect a hype IP connect to a internet connected router. The hype 805 Keybus interface. 
the NO5 panel can connect to, the, to a, a hype unit in two ways. Using the dialer, which will give you a full contact ID reporting, the 805 will need the plug-in dialer board and Hive Hub will need the plug-in dialer interface. If connected via the dialer, you, can, you cannot connect the Hive Hub um, Hive Home app to control your system to receive notifications. The Hive, 80, uh, the Hive 805 interface, 805 interface gives you your 80, IDS 805 the power to connect to the Hype Hub, allowing you to receive stable reporting and, and the use of Hype Home Smart, uh, Hype, Sub, Hype Smart Home app, allowing the alarm owner to control and receive notifications on their um, smartphone. However, if you are using the Keybus interface, the reporting is limited as you, are, or you, you will not receive the silent burglaries or panics. The Hype uh, outstation connects to the uh, 805 Keybus interface via a serial port to the serial connector. The jumpers on, on the, the interface board has three jumpers to enable and disable certain hardware. Jump one configures the, what the device interface is connected to. This must be on uh, for the Hype to, to, to work. Jumper 2 enables zone 2 on the interface board and reports as a zone 10. The jumper 3 enables zone 1 on the, on the interface board and reports as zone 9. The interface board LED in, indicates uh, communication with the 805 panel. A slow flash on the, uh, on the interface the, uh, <clears throat> A slow flash has not, uh, means that it has, a, uh, has not detected on power up and, and the unit is, is on a standalone mode. Uh, when the LED is on, uh, the 805 has, the, has been detected and is communicating with the IDS uh, 805 key bus interface. When it's off, it has detected but not communicating with the 805 key bus interface. The keybus interface connects to the 805 panel via the keybus and acts as a second keypad. The Hype Hub, uh, the, the Hype Hub outstation only sends events that, that are visible on the uh, 805 key, keypad. No silent zones will be transmitted. The interface gets the power from the 805 key bus. This is 12 volts auxiliary, can be used uh, to power the, the high outstation or low current LEDs via the interface inputs. The interface zones inputs of the interface board monitor for a open or closed condition. A 3K3 end of line resistor are required to supervise the zones and will be sent as a partition to the zone nine and 10 uh, uh, when triggered. The outputs on the interface board are, uh, are relays, driven uh, outputs and controllable via the Hype Home app. The tamper a slash uh, sync button this is a tamper button. Uh, it also doubles up as a sync button if the IDS interface is connected to a IP uh, connect module. Connect your uh, a Hype Hub to the uh, 805 panel using the 805 key bus. The 805 key bus interface then connects directly to the to the 805 key bus, uh, 805 panel key bus. Program contact ID in the installer program in location 61. 
This is by um, going into, so you are programming a location 61. This code that is monitoring software uses to identify the client. Program an account code in installer programming, location 61. This code is the, monitor, is the code that is monitoring software uses to identify the client. Program a serial, a serial security code in installer program and location uh, 196. This must be programmed after the Hype Hub is connected via the serial port. When troubleshooting uh, and connect, uh, when troubleshooting hardware and connectivity, you must start with the Hype Hub's um, uh, units LEDs. They will tell you if the unit is connected or not. And if not, why is it not connected? Here are a few, um, there are some errors uh, you may receive on the Hype Home app. Error 205 indicates an invalid user. Someone else has been made master user on the Hype Hub. This comes up when adding an additional user to the site. You must use a add a sub user option from the app. Error 206. This indicates that the hype is busy. When the hype is busy, it uh, is connected to the panel. It sends all the panel data to the app server. This can take up to 10 minutes. So you can wait 10 minutes before trying again. The error 207 indicates that the command time step stamp is outdated. This could be due to a network uh, delay, delaying the message uh, to, to, to the app server. Error 208 indicates that the communication to the panel timed out. This often happens if the serial code, code has been set. Set serial code in the location, uh, you can then set the, a new a serial code in location 196. Error 210 indicates that the panel has been has rejected the serial code. Try programming the you can remedy this by trying to program the, the serial code again in location 196 and make sure that the hype hub is connected to the panel when the serial code is programmed.
when adding when adding a sub user you click on the top right corner with the three dots click on the sub user tap on the sub user option you click on the avatar the, the avatar that's available on the top right you then get the hype id or you scan the barcode from the secondary user who's now registered on the hype phone app as well So if you are using the Hype ID, which you get from the My Profile on the Hype, on the Hype app of the secondary user that you want to add to the site, that's where you, you tap. You then give the, the permissions to the sub-user that you are adding. So if you have multiple partitions and you want the user just to have a, a specific um, access to, to, to the alarm panel, you, you, you can then set on those, uh, you can then set those options there. The sub user has then been added. When you edit the site, this is where you go in when you've saved you when you want to save your you want to make changes to your saved information i.e your pin on the app or make changes or edit the site name or change the color of the the the, the site that you've created as well you can also change the address change or edit the, the, the partitions or, or name of the partitions, you select the pencil icon or pen icon to change the name of the partition. Here you want to call it your main house. Maybe you've got a you've got outside themes as your secondary or, or, or your second partition. You can amend these using these steps. To arm all partitions, you then swipe the side to the left and you have an arm all. You tap to arm all. If and when the, the, you type in the pin uh, that you use on the alarm panel that you programmed, you can then set the option to either show the pin for arm or, or bypass. So it doesn't ask you for the pin every time you, you arm all or disarm. Or this as you can see, the, the icon, the padlocks have then changed from a open lock to a, a closed padlock. This means now the alarm panel is now on. To disarm, you follow the same step. You swipe to the left. The arm all will now change to a disarm all. You put in the pin. If you had stored the pin, this will then and automatically then just disarm without asking you the pin. As you can see, the, the padlocks have now opened up, meaning that all partitions are now disarmed. When using the, the panic 
option on the app, you swipe to the left, you tap and hold until the bar reaches a, a, the, the, the top. The system will then, either if you haven't saved the pin, the, the global pin, it will prompt you for the pin and then trigger a panic on the system. On a partition, you go into the site itself, then it brings you up to the partitions that are available. This means if you just want to arm a partition, call it, you just want to arm the, either the inside of the house or the outside beams. If you have the outside beams as partition one or partition two, and it will only arm the partition selected. As you can see, the partition one now is on only. Partition two is still then in a disarm state. To disarm a partition, you follow the same steps. You go into the site, you swipe to the left, have the option to disarm and disarm. You will prompt you for the pin if you haven't stored the pin. In order to bypass a zone, you need to make sure that the pin that you are using to bypass does have bypass permissions. Because when you go into the or try and bypass, the app will probably show up a, a reason unknown. This is generally the issue if the pin that you are using does not have the bypass permissions to arm. So it's best to go in and pro or, or check that the pin that the program has bypass permissions. And by following the, these steps, um, as you can see, it's probably the easiest to just bypass. You tap on the bypass zone, or the slider on the zone, and it, it will change to green. That means that zone is now bypassed. And it will prompt you for the pin. Once the pin is, is put in, it will prompt as well. It will, show, it will also give you a notification on the app. The app also has the option to, for, for automation to be done. This is for triggering either to, to open your gates, to turn on the lights, to turn, open your gate. You do need a other, um, other parts like relays to be to be connected to your to your panel and uh, program accordingly.
as you can see. Uh, you can name the trigger, call it the gate if you want to uh, operate the gate. And then you, you type in the PGM number that you've now connected your relay to to trigger the, the well, the gate or, 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 or the gate motor. You select if the PGM switches between on or off or a pulse on then off. You enter the pin, you enter the user code and select uh, the pin to be stored. Then you click on add trigger. In order to trigger the, the automation, you then select on the app. On the tab, one of the tabs on the app, which is automation, you then select the gate, then tap the pulse icon. Under the global settings, this is where you manipulate or make changes on what notifications you wish to have on your app. Uh, the emergencies are regarded as burglaries, panics. So these will sound and also send you a visible notification on the app, which will show in the banner on your device. So if you don't want these notifications to show up, you can set the slider off. And that would be the, the, the same case uh, on all the, uh, the other options as in this arm. So if you don't want to get a notification when this arm or bypass or arm, you set those options um, to return off. The troubles are your AC fails, your power ups, when there is an issue on the actual uh, alarm panel. Your information option The information option will list will list a information such as your power up so that's if your panel has now drained battery and now it's, it's now restored power it will show up as an information if it's a trouble it will show up as an AC fail or an AC restore or a low battery well arms and disarms are self-explanatory The, the My Profile on the app will then show you your information of the, your registered information, be it your cell phone number, your email address, and if you are your barcode. The site, the information such as your IMEA number of the, of the hype units that's linked to your, your profile will be listed under sites, if you, I'm not sure if you guys can see, but it shows sites and the uh, ho uh, home option just below that. Those couple of digits are the IMEI number of the radio that's linked to this profile. So instead of going up and down from probably an installation to read off if the high profile has been added already, you can then go into the user's profile and access the IMEI number from here. The user ID to ID add or share the the hype ID to link up a sub-user. This is where you, you retrieve the information from the, from the app. This is under my profile on the app.
the, the notifications are situated on the bell icon on the app and they show all the notifications that have come through since the Hive app has been loaded. It is known that the, the app also does retrieve previous, previous events from the alarm panel. This does take a while in some instances. Some panels, uh, new installations do not do this. But uh, uh, existing panels and then add to the Hive app will then first deliver all the, the, the events before before stopping the notifications. The Hyper app has now been integrated with CCTV, meaning in a when you have, if you have a CCTV um, system uh, installed at your premises, you can link it up to your Hyper app. Bear in mind that it will only work with the Dahua DVR systems. Uh, the Hype now supports CCTV integration, allowing you to link a camera to a zone for alarm verification before connecting your Hype Home app to your CCTV system. You will need to optimize your DVR uh, slash NVR to, to work with your Hype app. Once the CCTV has been optimized, you must then connect it to your Hype Home app. Parameters that need to be set in order for optimizing your CCTV setup. You need to set time zone, enable motion recording and pre-recording, enable substream and enable P2P.
setting the time server is important because when the high form app pulls video in correspondence to an alarm event, it will pull the timestamp of the alarm, of that of the alarm. Therefore, your CCTV system and alarm system cannot be more than a few seconds um, difference. The pre-record is a is an important as time setting. This is because you want to view the footage a, a few seconds before the alarm event. It will also help if the, there is a slight difference, even a few seconds, uh, in, in 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 time between your phone and CCTV system. These parameters need to be set exactly as a noted on this training to alleviate any flaws or, or, or mishaps on the app's functionality. The Hive app uses the substream recording, so this must be set properly. Substream uses a small video data and are quicker to access.
P2P is your remote connection into the CCTV system. This must be enabled and must show online. There are four things that um, that I'm going to show you how to, to how to do on the Hive Home app to fully experience the CCTV integration. One is adding the, a camera. Two is linking a camera to a zone. Three is viewing an alarm notification playback, and four is viewing a a live video. When adding a camera, add it, add it to a site, scan the, the P2P QR code on the DVR slash MDR to add and select the camera channel number. I'm not sure, are, are you guys able to view the, the video correctly or is it also not clear on your end? You can link uh, many zones to a camera, but only one camera to a zone. This is so the app knows which camera to open when a zone is violated. So you click on the link, the chain option to link. You then select the partition that you want to link the, the 
camera two. You then select, once selected the partition, you go into the zone that you want to link the camera to. You then select the link option. Once linked, it will then go back to the main screen of the CCTV on the app and show as a zone or a, a camera that's added. If there is no video at the event of the alarm notification, the Hype Home app will show the live footage. Live footage. We may then need to increase the, the MD sensitivity if the alarm detectors trigger, but there's no recording. This is how you can view the live feed from uh, at any time. Thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for, for being part of our training. The training will be shared uh, to all the registered users. So if you are in the, the meeting room, we will be then sharing it um, on our website as well. Uh, so it is available to download. You are able to, to get the, how to use the app under the, the help option on the app itself. On the un online how to guide, it will show you literally everything uh, that we've gone through on, on this training session. The CCTV option as well to add or, or, or configure your your EDR to to link up to your Hype app is available under the CCTV option on the app. The videos that have shown on the on this training are also shown on the CCTV option on the app uh, there's two up there's two videos linked uh, on the app directly thank you for participating